and decimals. We know from the previous lesson that percent means per 100 or out of 100. We can also use that to calculate the following, um, the following problems. So 42 divided by 100, I can do this a couple of different ways. I can either just plug this into my calculator, 42 divided by uh, 100 is 0 0.42. I could use long division um, or short division depending on uh, what skills you learned in elementary school. Uh, that's one way. Another way um, is to do it mentally, and, uh, and that's by moving that decimal place. So normally, a whole number, we don't write the decimal place, but the decimal place is right here at the very end of your number. So if that's your decimal place normally, and if we look at where the decimal place is now, what I've done is I've moved this decimal place two spots for that one spot for each zero, two spots to the left. So to divide by 100 mentally, move the decimal place two spaces to the left. So that's a quick way to do those calculations in your head if that works for you. If you want to continue to use your um, calculator, that is perfectly fine or long division or short division or any other method that uh, may work for you as long as you are getting the answers consistently correct. So for this next one, I'm going to move my decimal place two spots to the left. So my answer becomes zero decimal two, three, four. Or this is the same as saying 234 thousands. So Remember to always include that zero in front of your decimal place um, to show that you are um, have zero whole numbers and just the decimal portion of that. So the next one, where is my decimal place? So normally it's at the end, so I'm moving it two spots to the left, so zero decimal six seven. Sometimes when you move it to the left, there are no spots to move it to. So this is what it would look like. So one, two, there's my new decimal place. I have to include a zero in front. And then I always think about putting another zero there, almost like you're putting an egg back into the carton. So this becomes zero decimal zero five three seven. So let's do another one. My decimal place is at the end of this eight. So I'm moving it two spots to the left. So there's my new decimal place. And I am including a zero here in that spot plus my zero out front. So this becomes zero decimal zero eight. And lastly, 0 0.04 divided by 100, moving that decimal two spots to the left, adding my zero in front of my decimal place, and adding my extra zero in that space there. So it's zero decimal zero zero four. So 48%, well, we know 48% is the same as writing 48 over 100, or 48 out of every 100, which anytime we see a fraction, a fraction also means division. So whether I write it as a fraction or whether I write it using a division sign, I'm still doing the same operation. So I'm still taking my first number and dividing it by my second number or my numerator divided by my denominator. And so in order to do that, I can either just plug that in into my calculator, 48 divided by 100, or I could use long division, or I can use that trick that I know to mentally move the decimal place uh, two spots to the left. So anytime I'm dividing, I'm moving it to the left. So here's where my decimal place usually sits, but I don't often write that. And I'm moving it one, two, so that it's right in front of my four. So at zero decimal four, eight. So how do I write each of my following percentages as a decimal? Well, let's take a look at what I have here. My 48% is the same as 0.48. Hmm. 
So all I'm doing here, again, is just taking this, where would my decimal place be originally? Well, originally it'd be right there at the end of my three in this case for 63%, and I would just move that two spots to the left. So this becomes 0 0.63. Know that I can also think about writing this as 70 divided by 100, if that works better for you. Um, think about it that way, but also know that it's the same as doing 0 0.70. You may choose to write your 0 at the end. This is what we call a trailing 0. So after the 7, any time the zeros occur at the end of the number, when we look at them in decimal places, these are called trailing zeros, I don't have to write those. So I could write this as just 0 0.7. Both of these mean the exact same thing. Both of these would be marked correct on a test, assignment, or quiz. Next one. When we have 5%, we can think about moving our decimal spot two spots to the right, or to the left, sorry. So this becomes 0 0.05. When I have 135%, so sometimes your questions will have more than 100%, and that's okay. Um, we can talk about what that means when we get to those types of applications. So we are going to take our decimal place. So right now it's a bit the end of my number, and I'm moving it two spots to the left. So this becomes 1.35. Moving my decimal spot two spots to the left again for 9.4%. That's the same as 0, decimal 0, 0.094. Don't forget to put that little zero in that spot there. So your egg in your carton. And the last one, 0.3%, is the same as 0, decimal 0, 0, 0.003. So you can choose to either do these questions mentally or you can choose to just type them into your calculator, 70 divided by 100, or you could use long division if you're really feeling ambitious. So why is it important to know how to convert a percentage to a decimal number? Well, I need to do that in order to find the percentage of certain numbers. And a lot of times this deals with money. So if we want to know what the tax is worth, for example, or if we want to know how much of a tip we should leave, if we were taking uh, someone out for dinner, or if we wanted to know what um, the sale price might be, or if we were having starting our own business and we wanted to make a profit, what should we charge people for an item? A lot of times our percentages deal with money. So when we have a question that asks you to find 15% of $60, this means that in order to do this question, I need to first convert my percentage to a decimal. Then I have to know that the word of means multiplication. So then it becomes a question that looks like this. So 15% as a decimal is 0.15 or 0 0.15. Of is multiplication, and I'm multiplying that by 60. So I can take this and enter it into my calculator. So 0 0.15 times 60 is equal to 9. I have to include my dollar sign because that's the unit that I'm dealing with in this question. So my final answer must include that dollar sign because 15% of $60 is $9. So what does that mean for these other questions? Well, I first convert my percentage into a decimal. So this becomes 0 decimal 0.20. Of is multiplication. So I'm finding 0 .2 times $75. And doing that calculation gives me a final answer of $15. So again, make sure you are including your dollar sign and also put your dollar sign in front of your number. Please don't put it in the end of your number. Put it in the front of your number. That is good mathematical format. Part C, 
First, we change our percentage into a decimal. So 4% is the same as 0 0.04. Of is multiplication. So I'm finding 0 0.04 times 1,250. And that gives me a final answer of $50. So you are welcome to use your calculator for these. Or you could do multiplication by hand if that is something that um, really excites you. All right, a few more examples. 18%, change that to a, a decimal number, 0.18 times 36.40. You'll notice that we have to include the zero in this number because money always deals with two decimal places because of the cents. So I'm taking 0.18 times 36.40, and that gives me an answer of 6.552. Now, because I'm dealing with money, I can't have three decimal places. So I have to do some rounding. So I have to keep two decimal places, but because the number to the right of my five is a two, then I keep that as a five. So this becomes $6.55. So this would be the answer that you would need to write in order to get full marks. If you write 6.552, then you're not going to get all of your marks for that particular question. So please remember that money deals with two decimal places, and so you can only have two decimal places. You can't have any more, and you can't have any less, okay? So you can't just have one number there. So I couldn't write 36.4 dollars. I would have to include my point Four zero to show that that's 40 cents. Next question. Convert my decimal number into a percentage, or sorry, my percentage into a decimal. I'm multiplying that by 84.21. Plugging that into my calculator gives me $10.9473 Point nine four seven three. Again, I need to think about rounding. So I have to keep two decimal places, so that's my four, but because the number to the right of that is seven, it's greater, I have to round that up to a five. So this actually becomes $10.95. And my last example on this side of my sheet, I'm going to convert 140% as a decimal number, that's 1.40, or 1.4 would work as well, and I'm multiplying that by 216. 1 1.4 times 216 is equal to 302.4, but because this is money, I have to include that zero. I have to keep two decimal places. So this becomes $302.40. So you must include that trailing zero when we're dealing with money in order to get the full marks for this question. Let's take a look at some more uh, questions that involve some percentages in real life situations. So percentages in the world around us. So we see percentages when we are dealing with a tip. So a tip is sometimes also called a gratuity. So you might see that word at a hotel or a restaurant. Um, so this is a tip is usually left at a restaurant for good service. This is usually based on the percentage of the bill. Mrs. Enjoyed It was very happy with her service, so she planned on leaving a 20% tip. A 15% tip is also fair. A 20% tip is even better. So how much would her tip be if the bill was $34.65? So we want to know what 20% of $34.65 is. So the first thing I want to do is convert my percentage to a decimal number. So 20% is the same as 0 0.20 or 0 0.20. Of is multiplication, and I'm multiplying that by 34.65. I'm going to take my calculator, and I'm going to enter in 0 
0.2, sorry, 0 0.20 times 34.65, and that gives me 6.93. I have to include my dollar sign because this is my unit, so my unit is dollars, and so I would write a concluding statement, therefore, her tip would be $6.93. Another example of percentages in the world deals with commission. So if you are a salesperson, so if you work at a car dealership or sometimes even furniture stores, you might have um, be paid on commission. So a commission is a type of salary. So that's this, this is where someone earns money based on how much they sell. A real estate agent is another example of someone who works on commission. So they earn commission of 2.5% in this case. Uh, how much would the real estate agent earn in commission if they sell a house for $240,000? Well, this question tells me that I need to find 2.5% of $240,000. So the first thing I need to do is convert my percentage into a decimal place. So moving that decimal place two spots to the left gives me 0 0.025 and I'm multiplying this by $240,000. You'll notice I'm putting equal signs in front of my lines and I'm only doing one um, step per line. So I really wanna focus now that I'm doing longer steps or longer questions that I'm really focusing on how I format my solutions so that anyone who looks at this will understand what I do in order to get to that final answer. So I'm taking 0 0.025 and I'm timesing it by 240,000 and that gives me an answer of $6,000. So therefore, they would earn $6,000. And lastly, let's calculate um, some things that we might be able to do in our head after this. So 10% of 145, this is the same as taking 0 0.10, so I'm moving that decimal place two spots to the left, times 145, which works out to be 14.5. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. 10% of 2,500. So first convert your percentage into a decimal number, so 0.10 times 2,500. I do that calculation, type it in, I get 250. Let's take a look at the next one. 10% or 0.10 times or of 65.9. What does that look like? Well, typing that in, again, gives us 6.59. You may already be starting to see a pattern. If not, we're going to explore that pattern in just a little bit. So 10% of 132 and 75 hundredths, so that's 0 0.10 times 132.75, and that gives me, as I type it in, 13.275. And lastly, 10% of 0 0.63 Again, typing that in, you're welcome to do this to follow along if you want to, at 0 decimal 0, 0.063. So what has happened to these numbers? Well, 
if I look here, 10% of 145 was 14.5. My decimal place is usually at the end. I've moved it one spot to get 14.5. So remember, if I was finding 100% of a number, or if I was taking um, a number and dividing by 100, I would move it two spots. So one spot for every um, for every zero. The same thing happens here. Interesting. All right. So point 10 times 2,500 was 250. So I took that decimal place and I moved it to the left again, one spot to give 250. Did that same thing here work here? Absolutely. And here? Yeah. And here? For sure. So how can you determine 10% of a number without a calculator? You move the decimal place one spot to the left. And that is a quick way that you can do these calculations in your head now. So if we know 10% of a number was about $24, how much do you think 5% of the number would be? Hmm. So 10% of a number was $24, and 5% is half of 10%, so 20, half of $24 would be $12. So let's explain that with using our words now. So 5% is half of 10%. Therefore, $12 is half of $24. So 5% of the number I can even take away this therefore statement there. So I can say therefore, 5% of the number is $12. So 5% is half of 10%, $12 is half of $24. So 5% of the number is $12. If you have any questions about this lesson, please reach out to me, send me an email, sign up for a virtual help session, and I will see you in the next lesson.